Buddhist Rituals of Death and Rebirth by Orion Magpie. There are many beliefs and rituals involving death and rebirth in Buddhism. Today, I will be going over rituals and doctrines that Buddhists practice. But before I get into that, what is Buddhism? Buddhism is a religious and cultural phenomena that takes many shapes and forms across the world. The goal is to awaken to the true nature of reality, which is to liberate oneself from the physical limitations of materialism. Another one of Buddhism's goals is to end dukkha, which is generally defined as unnecessary suffering. Buddhism originated in ancient India over 2,500 years ago and has since spread across the globe. Buddhism has reached Japan, China, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, Sri Lanka, Thailand, and beyond. This includes Western nations as well. Buddhists have special belief systems that influence their ideas of death and rebirth. Samsara and karma are two of these doctrines that heavily influence death rituals. Merit is also gained in various ways which affects karma. In many of these death and rebirth rituals, the goal is to generate merit, which is then transferred to the deceased for assistance in karma and rebirth. Samsara is the belief that there is a continuous cycle of life, death, and rebirth that all unenlightened beings must go through. This continues until enlightenment is reached and the cycle is broken. While moving through the samsara cycle, soul growth is considered automatic until the human form is reached. Once human, we gain free will and responsibility, which we must use to grow our karma and soul. Samsara in Sanskrit directly translates to wandering, which is the reference to the traveling along the continuous cycle of life, death, and rebirth. Dukkha is an aspect of samsara that must be overcome, and anitya, which is defined as impermanence, must be recognized and understood in order to break the cycle. Karma is the belief that every intentional action brings with it a reaction, a positive or negative consequence. These karmic consequences can be immediate or they can take lifetimes to come to fruition. Positive actions bring positive karma, which allows a good rebirth. Negative actions bring negative karma, which can set you back and weigh down your rebirth. One of the main reasons why death rituals are so important in Buddhism is because your last moments, thoughts, and feelings in this life will directly impact your first moments in the next life. Having a good death moment does not cancel out any negative karma, but it can give a head start for building up merit. Examples of death and rebirth rituals in Buddhism include the offering of the cloth, specialized funerary services involving chanting offerings and feasts, and ghost month celebration rituals. Before I get any deeper into rituals, exactly what is a ritual? A ritual is a three-stage transformative event that goes from separation to transition to reintegration. In the case of Buddhist death rituals, death initiates the first stage of separation by separating you from the world of the living. The next stage is transition, which is when you are dead but not yet reborn, in a state of in-between. The final stage is reintegration, which happens when you are born and reintroduced into this world anew. Death in Buddhism is an essential step in the Buddhist's journey and is considered to be a natural transition from one stage to another. Death is therefore not considered an end, but instead is a new beginning. Physical comfort is important for reducing the suffering of the dying, which helps to maintain positive thoughts in the dying moment. These death rituals are also performed to help the grieving friends and family by comforting and supporting in a difficult time. Rebirth in Buddhism represents the reintegration stage of ritual and can be immediate or take up to 49 days time. There are six possible forms of rebirth, which include hell creature, hungry ghost, animal, human, demigod, and god. To break rebirth cycle, which is the ultimate goal of Buddhism, one must reach enlightenment. This is why the human rebirth is considered such a blessing, because it gives the best chances of enlightenment. Let's go a bit deeper into the important aspects of death rituals in Buddhism. Chanting sacred texts, verses, and prayers, along with sermons, are all important for building merit for the deceased. It is also good to pay homage to Buddha in chants and repeat it three times. Lay people and monks have differing requirements for their funerals. For example, monks must be cremated while lay people do not. To build more merit, it is encouraged to invite monks over for a feast in the deceased's honor. After the feast, to build even more merit, you can leave the food scraps out for hungry ghosts and donate the utensils used. This funerary ritual is repeated after three months, one year, and sometimes annually after that. Now let's go over a specific Buddhist death and rebirth ritual. The Mataka Vastra Puja is a ritual that involves reciting the Mahaparini Bana Sutta. Before the funerary ritual begins, one must donate a white cloth to a monk. The monk will use the white cloth for crafting monastic robes. The goal of this ritual ceremony is to build up more merit to transfer to the deceased. After the first half of the chant, 
Water is poured into an overflowing cup whilst reciting the second half of the chant as a way to transfer merit to the deceased. Here is the Mahaparini Bana Sutta chant used during the Mataka Vastra Puja. Formations truly, they are transient. It is in their nature to arise and cease. Having arisen, they then pass away, their calming and cessation, happiness. Now is when you start pouring the water and begin the second half of the chant to transfer the merit that has been built. Just as water rained on high ground moves down to the low land, even so does what is given here benefit the dead. Just as the rivers full of water fill the oceans full, even so does what is given here benefit the dead. Many Buddhists have annual death ritual festivals called Ghost Month Rituals. In Laos, there are two such festivals which occur during the ninth lunar month. On the first day of the new moon on the ninth lunar month, the festival of the rice packets decorating the earth begins. This ritual festival involves leaving rice wrapped in banana leaves around temples as offerings for merit. On the day of the full moon during the ninth lunar month, the festival of back baskets drawn by lot begins. During this ritual festival, people fill baskets with flowers, plants, food, and offerings for their deceased ancestors. Don't forget to write the name of your deceased loved one on a slip and put it in the basket before you give it to the monk so the monk knows who to transfer the basket's contents to. The goal of this ritual is to transfer food, offerings, and merit to the deceased while honoring and remembering them. In China, there are also ghost month rituals, but they are done quite a bit differently. In Memorial of the Dead, spirits are invited to participate in rituals in Buddhist monasteries. To build merit for the deceased, the Amitabha, a scripture of the Bodhisattva Ksidigarbha, is recited. Monks read off a list of the deceased to ensure everyone who is named receives merit. During the peak of the festival, large quantities of money and food are offered to hungry ghosts and abandoned souls. All the merit generated from the festival is then transferred to the deceased.